because he is America's black Mozart. And there was no one else who was going to tell it. And my friends and my family, they kept saying, you have to write that story. And here's my book, Eighth Wonder, the Thomas Bethune story. A slave born blind, feeble, and left for dead, who started playing Mozart at the age of three. I got started in writing at the University of Washington. And while I was at the University of Washington, I took some classes, mostly in broadcast journalism, but I had an opportunity once I graduated to take a journalism class for print journalism. I was working as an assistant at the Seattle Times in the sports editing department and the sports editor and I actually had a bond and she took an interest in my career. I started writing for the Beacon Hill News and some local sports magazines and then I got an internship at the Seattle Times and from that internship the managing editor of the newspaper took an interest of me and I had a meeting with the managing editors and we discussed how we could further my career and they suggested that I apply for this very prestigious program at the Seattle Times. This mentorship program was a program where you were trained extensively as a reporter in Los Angeles. You had eight weeks of journalism training from the top editors at the newspaper and then you were sent out as general assignment reporters in different areas of the newspaper. There were, uh, I believe, 30 reporters who were chosen out of 8,000 reporters from the entire country out of the University of Washington, I landed that program and I ended up leaving Seattle, moving to Los Angeles, and starting a career as a Los Angeles Times reporter. At the end of the program, you were guaranteed a job in a Times Mirror newspaper, and that's how my writing career started and got off the ground. From the LA Times, I was sent back east to New York, and I worked in New York, and I worked in Connecticut, but I still had the bug of the entertainment industry that I had been exposed to when I was in the Los Angeles area. And I decided to apply to graduate school, and that's when I, did, I applied to Cal State Northridge and Loyola Marymount. I got into both, and I decided to go to Northridge because the writers of My Cousin Vinny and a script that had been sold for a million dollars starring Leonardo DiCaprio as a teenager had been sold by two writers at Northridge, and so I decided to enroll at Northridge and get my master's degree in screenwriting, and that's what I did. And then how did you uh, get the jobs for screenwriting? For screenwriting, everything, I thought when I left journalism that I was making a, par a parallel career move, and I didn't understand that I was moving from a career into the art, and the art is based on relationships. Once I realized that relationships were extremely important, I spent another year and a half developing relationships with fellow filmmakers at USC. I worked on over 30 student films as an assistant director and associate producer, and while I was working at USC, I decided to write and produce an independent movie called Ken Folks that was picked up by Showtime Incorporated, and that was my first development deal. So when I was in Greenwich, it was an eye-opening experience for me because I had an opportunity to interview some of the most prominent people in the, on the planet, really. And one thing that warmed my heart is when I was leaving to go to graduate school, the school district, the superintendent included, they threw me a party. And they said that they had never done that for a reporter before, but they wanted to honor me because I was such an honest and earnest reporter. And they gave me flowers, and they gave me a book. And the book was a fictional book, and it was about a little bear that was so honest and so earnest that it became real. And the superintendent, when I left, he said, when I first met you, I wondered if you were real. And now, now I know that you really are real. And so that really touched my heart because I always tried to do my job with integrity and I wanted to do my job with excellence while at the same time serving the newspaper and at the same time serving the community in a way that was beneficial to both. And that's really a nice lead into uh, how you have 
honored this man's memory and you've brought his life to life. That was really important for me because Thomas Bethune, he was treated well. His stage name was Blind Tom. But one thing that his mother said that struck out to me in one of the articles from the New York Times was that the family never called him Tom and they did not like his stage name moniker. And for some reason, instinctively, I knew that Blind Tom, though famous and though it brought a lot of joy to Georgia and people of the South and for America in general, I knew that we don't call our heroes, we don't say the deaf Beethoven and we don't say the earless Van Gogh. And so instinctively I knew that they would probably pr prefer for him to be called Thomas, which is what they called him, and Thomas Bethune. So I felt that he was an American virtuoso and he should be brought back and remembered as such because for a child and a blind autistic slave to have 180 works produced in have it published is phenomenal and I think that by doing this book that we can somehow restore his legacy that fell into the cracks of history. Well I, I think it's wonderful that you have honored his legacy. Thank you, thank, thank you. you. Well, that thank, a lot. Thanks for being on my show. Thank you so much for having me. And we're going to have you on more segments in the future. <laughs> Thank you. Now, I think it's fascinating that you did the screenplay before you did the book. Well, I'm a, for 15 years I was a screenplay writer. Screenplay writers writing screenplays and television. And so it was natural for me to write the screenplay first. I actually had some interest in the screenplay. And from that interest, I realized that it was such a big movie, potentially an uh, award-winning movie that I could get replaced as a writer. And a fellow writer of mine on the Tyler Perry show said that if you write the book, they can't take the screenplay away from you. And so I contemplated what I should do. I finished the screenplay, and I decided at that point that I was going to write the novel. But it took me about another year and a half before I sat down and actually started writing the novel. It's a completely different discipline. I had no idea in writing in prose. Screenplays are more like outlines with creative arcs and with inciting incidents, and they're written in a three-act structure. A novel is a completely different art form where you write from moment to moment and you have the craft, the backstory, and the inner thoughts of the character. When you write a screenplay, you never write the inner thoughts of a character. That's actually a no-no. So I had to learn how to write novels and I actually, after a year and a half of writing the book, I actually went to UCLA and took classes on how to write a novel. So the whole process took several years. Wow. It's just fascinating uh, to hear all the different steps that it takes. It's, it's a remarkable project. Yeah, it really is. It's kind of like the comedian Kevin Hart. He says, it's so funny that everyone says, oh, I can get up on the stage and tell a joke. Everyone thinks that they can write. I would never tell an Olympic athlete that I can go out and run in the Olympics the next day, but a lot of people think that they can just sit down and write a screenplay or write a television show. I even have, you know, people who say, you know, can you recommend me to write for a television show? And they think they can do it overnight, and it's a craft like anything else. So it takes a lot of work, a lot of thought process, and a lot of training. So I have a master's degree, I'm working on my doctorate. It's not something that I did overnight. I actually trained years and years to get to the level to write for television and to write a novel that is in the state that it is now. Well, we are happy to, to have you on the show because your information is so remarkably important for the public to hear about how this is done and your struggle to get it produced and, and written. It really is blood, sweat, and tears. It really takes a lot to get where you need to go. And I remember I was in a situation one time where a friend wanted um, their friend to actually recommend their husband for a job with an A-list star. 
and that A-list star called back and said, there are people who banged their head up against the brick wall for 15 years to get the opportunity that you're asking me for. You're taking care of your family. That's what you're supposed to do. I cannot give you this opportunity. And I really do understand where he was coming from because it is like banging your head up against a brick wall. Yeah, people don't understand how much work it is. And then it's not just the work that's on... It's the reputation. I mean, if you refer somebody, it's your reputation on the line for whoever it is you refer. Absolutely. And it's a very, very uh, complicated business. Yeah. I have, I have a lot of friends from Seattle who are extremely gifted. And, you know, Kenny G's from Seattle. And I have friends who will call me and say, can you put me on this show or put my music on that show? You are asking me to put you on a show where there's Grammy Award winners who are submitting material for the show. So it's not that you don't want to help your friends or people that you grew up with, it's just that if you ask for help, be prepared with the level of accomplishment that you need to actually seize upon the opportunity. And also it's not worth your career in case that person's uh, material hurts you. You know, everybody can be tainted by everything. And so the thing is, people don't understand, you have built your life for this. And you have worked really, really hard for the reputation that you've received. And you are, you know, really in the market and, and it's, it's remarkable. Thank you. And that's like, I've been in the market for 35 years. And that's why I appreciate really a lot that you took this time out of the busy holiday season to meet with me and do this interview. Thank you. And so I, I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you.